All right, what's, who's with me? <laughs> well, Jeff Seekers here, David Barnson's here, Liz McDonald and Ashley Webster as well. Jeff, to you first. Stocks have been on a great run. Will this, if there's a China trade deal and the Wall Street Journal says it's being finalized, is that going to put stocks on an even more, an, another second leg up? Jeff. Well, here's what I have to say about that. I think the market is already anticipating that there will be some sort of trade deal. I think it's yesterday's news. I think it's going to be very anticlimactic when it's announced, when there's the photo up. I think people are going to begin to question whether we have the ability to enforce the, int the, okay. the provisions on, on intellectual property, which are the most important element of this deal. So the celebration, I believe, has happened. It's We'll get a little bit of a bump up, and then the market will settle back into reality. What do you say, David Barnson, about this possible, likely new trade deal? I agree with Jeff entirely with one caveat. I think it's all priced in except for if they actually repeal the 10 percent tariffs that President Trump mm. implemented mm. last year. Now, I don't think they're going to. But I really do not believe the market has priced that in. So that could be an extra, you know, boost to the market if that surprises us. But I agree that not going up to 25 percent at this point is well priced in. I actually don't think the market cares as much in the short term about what those enforcement provisions will be on intellectual property theft. I think that's more of a political issue and it drives at the substance of the deal. But as far as market sentiment, they just sort of want to know that the worst is behind us with mm. tariffs and we can get trade going again. Well, look, this Monday morning we've opened in the first three minutes with a gain of, what, 117 points on the Dow Industrials. Yep. Would you, Liz, Ash, yeah. is this because of the likelihood of a China trade deal? Yes. It seems that That's way. It. Yes, I think, I I'm think it is. I'm not missing something. Well, you know, it was to Jeff's point. It was a positive that China's saying, yes, we will act on the IP theft issue. How, what's the enforceable mechanism? They're saying it's going to be an, administra an administrative law. They'll still do it. Well, uh, but, you know, but that, that was a positive, stages though. of this process. And so far, it appears positive. But wait a second. We've had a terrific run up in 2019. And I submit that the primary reason for that is the trade deal with China. Am I completely off course? Uh, but also, don't forget our good friend Jerome Powell, who okay. gave the That's market the octane to get to where it was, when all of a sudden he went from somewhat of a hawk to a dove. He backed off interest right. rates. That got the market to move But the, yes. the momentum today, and in recent past, is the China trade deal. Feels I'm like just trying yeah, to say that. Yes. I want it out there, because yes. now we're up 113. <clears throat> right. Individual companies and stocks. First off, Tesla. Elon Musk says a new crossover SUV is coming. It's it's called the Model Y. David, the stock is like Teflon. Is this the true <laughs> believers just holding on tight and never letting it go down? Yeah, I mean, that's the entire story of Tesla stock for well over two years, and it will stay that way until it doesn't stay that way. <laughs> it, it bleeds cash like almost no company I've ever seen, and the shareholders don't care. And all they have to do is turn a profit and become a grown-up company before all their competitors come to market and start eating their lunch. That's it. <laughs> a grown-up company. Whoa, <laughs> strong stuff. Okay. We have Amazon planning to, uh, reportedly, planning to open dozens of grocery stores in several major cities nationwide. Jeff, you're our Amazon guy. I I'm guess you're going to say, watch out the com competition. Walmart, Kmart, and uh, not Kmart, Kroger. Uh, Kroger, yeah. Yeah, because this is this is this is Amazon's attempt to offer more affordable prices than Whole Foods get gets. But my mm. question to Amazon is, you are ta taking an initiative that can essentially cannibalize the Whole Foods. Uh, consumers that are used to paying more money. In order for Amazon to make this work, they need to be more affordable than everybody else, and that's not Whole Foods' model. So this well, is going to be interesting. That's a great point, because Whole Foods' prices are trending down right. fractionally right now. The question is, can they continue to do that, keep the customer base, and also switch to Amazon Go? Will we see mm -hmm. Amazon Go grocery stores? Because that's been the model, too. I think it's an interesting move, as well. right. because it's yeah. such a small margin business in the first place, and if you drive those prices even lower yeah you know how much are you going to get out of this R remove the tellers remove the tellers put the technology yeah. Yeah. in, make well. it distinct and maybe they could make it work but it does show that brick and mortar is not in fact dead right. for them to get involved in this that's true
Check the big board. We're holding on to a triple-digit gain. It's Monday morning. We're six minutes in, and we're up oh, almost uh, 100 points. The price of... Uh, there you go. We're up 100. Uh, check the price of oil. We're at 56.85 this morning. No noticeable impact on the stock market. But look at this. The price of gas just keeps on going up. Now we have a national average of 242. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we were right. back at 225, yeah, as right. I recall. So exactly. there you have it, 242 right now. The Wall Street Journal reports that AT&T may shake up Warner Media with significant layoffs. The stock is down 1% there. This is all about their takeover of Time Warner, right. et cetera, et cetera. It's really all about them positioning themselves to compete in the streaming business with Disney and uh, Netflix. Big names you know. And they announced the closure of almost 500 stores. Those announcements came in a 48-hour period. Mm -hmm. Gap, Foot Locker, L Brands, J.C. Penney, all were announcing closures. David, this is the retail ice age. It's really still going on, isn't it? Well, it's the retail ice age for brands that were in the ice age or at least coming up upon the ice age. And so it, that story continues. This is more proof of it, but it isn't happening to every retailer. It's right. very selective. Mm -hmm. And there mm -hmm. are some that are thriving and some that are not surviving. And that's what this story is all about. These are the more ice age category of retail names. Yeah, and when the, the, the brand that is thriving off of this is TJ Maxx, because it picks up that yeah. closed out inventory when a retailer goes bankrupt. TJ Maxx goes in there, takes that inventory, puts it at lower costs, on its shelves. There have been 57 bankruptcies since 2015. I would hazard that half of them went, took their inventory, put it at TJ Maxx. That's why that business model thrives. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. My, I, did, wonder, I wonder if these, some of these names could get uh, government subsidies to open <laughs> new places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good one, David. A very good one. All right, okay. Uh, Apple's chief, Tim Cook, reportedly getting very interested, involved, I should say, in Apple's TV shows. Uh, is huh. there some suggestion he's meddling? Yeah, the headline <laughs> are coming out because people are saying, where is Apple TV? What's going on with Apple TV? The word is Tim Cook and other executives are very hands on with this. They're saying to their content producers and the producers in this unit, don't put on mean content, nasty content. Go, don't go negative. So is it, it's all family friendly all the time where you have a producer like Shonda Rhimes over at Netflix saying, I love the creative freedom. So we still don't know the direction of Apple TV. We know it's going to be like Aquaman and Mary Poppins kind of it's going to uh, go fair, Disney. but you know, but so it, it's going Apple, the way of Disney. It seems. Is Apple TV another streaming service at some point? Yes, yes. it is. That's and, what it is. Yes. And keep in mind that now you get in trouble for this, but in 2012, I said that Apple should buy Netflix. And it, it, keep That's it, true. I did say it. Did. And I've said it about 50 times on the show. Mm. But the, the reality of it is, is that now they're going to be in family content. First of all, Tim Cook is not a creative person. He's proven that in the way he's run Apple. He's not creative, he's an operational CEO. Now they're going to take on Disney, who is, who is the, the, the king of family content, and they're going to have a very, very hard time. So I think Apple is, again, up against an innovation problem, and I don't think they're going to make any headway in, the, in uh, Apple What's TV. wrong with putting some money into Netflix and into Disney mm. and into Apple and into AT&T on the grounds that they're all in the streaming business. That's true. They're all probably going to do reasonably yes. well. Mm -hmm. They won't all win, but they'll all right. do reasonably right, well. Right, 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 And right. I'll be just sitting back in the future looking at a successful streaming business. What's I'm wrong with that? Uh, nothing. I, I, I think it's a great idea, except Spread stay away from Apple, because they don't have, they're don't. they not going to be able to do it. They've Apple's made miss, a lot of missteps. You're just Apple's spreading your bets. It's That's totally cheap. Yeah. It should be cheaper. Earnings? It should be cheap. <laughs> Terrible. <you know. laughs> David Barnson, I'm going to give the last word to you before I close this out. You've got 10 seconds. What do you want to say? I liked your idea so much until you threw AT&T in there. The reason you can't do that is $250 billion of debt. Yeah. That's uh, going to be That's some incredible point. streaming they're going to have to come up with. But they play a great dividend. I think it's about 6% at the moment. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> and, and that dividend is why I'm worried about it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Time's up, folks. Thank you very much, Jeff and David. We appreciate it. And uh, let's see. Now, wait a minute, David. You've got a book due out. Yes, you do. Uh, dividend, do. The case for dividend growth. When does it come out? April 9th, I'll be talking to you about it plenty, my friend. If you're not careful, <laughs> I'll put you on the show for that. Right. For a commission. David, Jeff, gentlemen, thanks very much.